Well, we've got a lot to talk about today, you guys, so thanks for clicking on the video. And you're probably out there searching for a fantastic monitor for your console, and you just happen to click on the right video for that solution for you. There's so many options out there that are good for console gaming, but you might be overspending, overbuying, or buying something that simply just doesn't work that well with console. So that's what these videos are all about. Today we're gonna to be talking about the BenQ Mobius EX2510S and how well I think it fits into the console gaming lineup, specifically testing Xbox and PlayStation 5, all the next gen stuff. So we're gonna dive in and check all that out today on this video. So first and foremost, you might be looking at a ton of different options. So I wanna get the specs out onto the table. This is a full HD 1080p, 165 Hertz, but 120 Hertz for you guys out there on console, that's what matters. 99% sRGB, one millisecond response rate, fantastic. 24 inch panel. It does have some good features when it comes to pixel response rate, HDR settings, it's flicker free and has a fantastic warranty that comes with it. The overall aesthetic of the monitor really stands out. It's a small footprint. So if you have a small desk or maybe you're in a very small cubby in the home, this is definitely gonna be something that's going to beat out what a TV can do for you in a small space. No, it's not HDR. HDMI 2.1. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to be able to do the 1080p 120 hertz, which leads me to tell you that it has two HDMI 1.4s on the back, a display port if you're a multi-user and want to be able to plug in a PC as well, and then of course it has a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, but it also comes with a 3.5 watt speaker built in. It's not bad, but it's not really that good either, so I would recommend getting a headset for your console that you're using. But most importantly, you guys wanna know, how is this gonna work with my console? So if you're using something like the PlayStation 5, this is what you can expect to get out of this monitor. So the video formats available to you on this monitor are going to be 4K, 60 Hertz, HDR, 1080p, 60 Hertz and 120 Hertz HDR, and it will not allow you to do the variable refresh rate. I will mention in the SDR settings, it will absolutely give you a full suite of calibration tools, ranging from color, contrast, pixel response rate, black level performance, all of the above that you can really get in and fine tune this monitor for your console gaming. And then in HDR, you do get three specific presets. One is HDR Standard, HDRI Cinema, and HDRI Game. I, we will be testing some of those out later, um, specifically the Cinema and the Game, but I do wanna mention there are different calibration menus depending on the preset that you have, which then of course brings up the Xbox. I'm using the Series S today, and uh, I do have to say that it's fairly similar on the available video formats. You do get the 4K 60 Hertz HDR capability. You get 1080p, 120 Hertz, and 60 Hertz capability with HDR are on and then one of the beautiful parts because this is FreeSync Premium with the Xbox you do get VRR. Hey maybe PS5 will do an update for this monitor later it just it isn't in the cards right now. That being said when you do want to go in and calibrate it's a full suite on SDR just like uh, on the PlayStation 5, but you will have to determine whether or not you want to use HDR. And both on the PlayStation and Xbox, that is a setting that has to be turned off if you don't want it auto switching to HDR, because the monitor does sense when the video input is sending an HDR signal and will auto switch. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. So jumping right into the gaming, you guys, we're gonna be playing a bit of Fortnite, but we're starting with the PlayStation 5. And the PlayStation 5, compared to my Series S, is a powerhouse when it comes to gaming. The overall color, though, that it produces on this monitor in Fortnite is fantastic. I mean, the contrast is a little high, but the overall greens, blues, and reds are coming out extremely well. And if we pause in the middle of me making any fast movements, we'll notice that there's not much ghosting happening. There's no artifacting. It's holding very strong, and that picture retention here 
at long distances or for small objects actually is doing extremely well. I mean, in my full review, I break this down to the extreme, but the black level performance, the lighting panel, the IPS glow is all really good on this monitor. And you can see the purples in the sky, the whites on the ground, the green on the ground, the color of my gun as I'm running and, and shooting this person, I pause and it's just a fantastic experience all around. And it really should be, it's Fortnite. It's nothing too intense. But jumping into something that's a little less powerful like the Series S, you do notice the difference. That color doesn't pop as well. So it tells me that this monitor actually holds up really strong when you have something a bit more powerful and that the Xbox Series S can't even use it to its full potential. Nonetheless, it performs extremely well. It's not oversaturated in color. There is some darker imagery happening here and it's able to pull out that detail. But because I don't have something that's as powerful in the middle of this interaction, when I do pause, you can see further out into the distance, we get some motion blur introduced, but we didn't see that with the PlayStation 5. And again, because of that variable refresh rate technology, it might be wise in this scenario to change the pixel response rate a little bit. I'm using the standard setting of one AMA. Nonetheless, I did find it very pleasant. And even though this is console, the input lag wasn't bad. It's definitely better on the PlayStation 5 and extremely good on PC, but on this Xbox, I didn't find it annoying or distracting in any way. So as part of a new benchmark suite that I'm putting together, I started playing Apex Legends. And I know it's only 60 hertz on console, not 120 hertz, but this will really stress how well a monitor does at lower refresh rates um, while still keeping that motion handling good. Will it perform well? And my expectation was actually really high for this monitor, although I did expect that I was gonna see some motion blur, maybe even you know some artifacting happening, but that was far from the experience I had. So jumping in on the PlayStation 5 here, I start around, this is my first match ever, and what I noticed was the battles were pretty intense. Like once you get into a skirmish, you're basically duking it out. <laughs> Everybody's throwing grenades, everyone's taking shots, and even as I pause in those interactions, you may see a bit of double image here, like an overshoot or motion blur. But even as I slide to make a shot towards an opponent that's attacking my teammate here, I pause and there's actually very, very low motion blur here. Everything is holding up very, very strong, even at 60 frames per second. You know, but then we get into some more intense gameplay, and this is where I really do wish this game was 120 frames per second capable. It's just not, and unfortunately, because of that, at 60 frames per second, what we see is, as I pause here on this intense interaction, you actually do get a bit of ghosting and motion blur, and I don't think it's the monitor's fault. I actually think this is the fact that the game is only 60 hertz, 60 FPS capped. So uh, maybe if they release an update, we'll see something better. Nonetheless, I have to report it because it's maybe struggling a little bit in these lower frames per second on these intense interactions. So I'm thinking maybe the Xbox Series S will actually perform a little bit better with that variable refresh rate technology. So I load up a game, I jump in, and I really wanna see how that motion handling is gonna perform when I'm face to face with a group. So what I do is I track this team down, I hunt them down, I see about three or four of them through this hallway. They're all just chilling, they don't expect me, and I've gotta make a couple quick moves here. So I start taking my shots and I know that they're coming at me. I start taking these pauses. And even though I'm not moving extremely fast, they are shooting at me and I'm turning, I'm kind of aiming at different points down where they're at. And I have to make some quick movements. And what that produces is, you know, it's a bit of motion blur happening here at my hand, but further down, as we look further down into the map, we're not really seeing any issues there. Things can be really good. It just kind of depends on the scenario. And it seems like the variable refresh rate technology on Xbox serves this monitor extremely well at that 60 FPS, or maybe even a little lower, somewhere in that mark. But because we want to test out the full capability of this monitor, we want to be able to hit that 120 Hertz. So go to the old standby. I fire up a bit of Warzone and jump in on the PlayStation 5. 
And once again, we see on this intro here, the contrast, the white point here is actually really high. That's, you know, kind of the upside downside of this monitor. It's extremely bright. But as I get into this interaction here, aiming down sights, a little bit further down filled, this guy's jumping out of a window and I take a pause here as I'm, I'm cracking his armor, I'm taking him down. And it's doing a pretty dang good job. But because that contrast is pretty high and that white point, that, that brightness is kind of overtaking some of the image, it's kind of hard to make out his character. Nonetheless, I'm able to pick up that detail, shoot him and down him, uh, but it doesn't bode well for maybe a bit more of an intense interaction. So if you are playing and switching between games, you will have to change that contrast level quite a bit depending on the game that you have. But I will mention that the contrast when adjusted does appropriately come down to the right brightness and white point level. You just have to change it between the games that you're playing. So I'll note that just in case you do buy it, make sure that dark games and bright games are set differently. Nonetheless, I actually cleaned up really well in this game and the motion handling at that higher frames per second served me extremely well. And you'll see in this next interaction, we're chasing down this team. I throw a cocktail down the hallway, take his buddy out, and then someone tries to come up behind me and I'm able to pull out my SMG, aim down sights, lock onto that target. He even got the jump on me and here I am able to get just body shot, body shot, body shot. You can see his character, good quality imagery, no motion blur, no tearing, no artifacting. You can actually even make out his face, which is fantastic. Um, and it did just a phenomenal job here, which leads me to say that in this first person shooter style game, this monitor on console gaming is one of the best that I've experienced in quite some time at 1080p. And just to drive that point home, I wanna show you on the Xbox Series S that in Warzone, it actually performed much like the PS5 in motion handling overall. No, the picture quality is not as good. The color accuracy seems to be a bit more dull. I was able to calibrate that out quite a bit on this monitor. But what truly matters in this style of game is whether or not when you're making those quick movements, you can see what's going on around you. That's what this monitor delivers. So that really only leaves us with one last thing to test. And it's the fact that that HDR setting in cinema uh, is supposed to be really good for movies and content. So of course, what I do is I go into my settings in the PlayStation menu, I make sure that my 4K HDR is working because it will downscale to 1080p. I fire up and turn on that HDRI cinema, jump into a bit of Amazon Prime Video and play The Rise of Skywalker. In this first intro scene, this intro scene where you have the star field, I always use this to test. Test black level performance, black level adjust, overall contrast capability, and whether or not HDR can actually produce a good result. And I won't say it was perfect. There are some things I can kind of pick apart. The stars are not very bright here. What I am able to adjust is that black level. I can pull it up if I need to. It gives me a bit of a hazy background rather than a good solid black but it will allow me to pull out some more detail in those shadow areas if I need to. And then actually looking at this fight scene here, it's a bit dark, you know, and that's how this movie is. I'm able to pull out some of those brighter colors like the reds, they really do come out. The natural tones of the skin, you can see. It's not perfect, but it's far from terrible and I have seen worse. Now, the scene that I like is kind of that opening scene where Ray is doing some training because it showcases a few things that monitors struggle to do. And that's one, you know, a bit of motion. And then also there are a few dark areas in a bright environment that if the panel is bad, the lighting is no good, the contrast kind of sucks and it doesn't make out good shadow detail. So it's here where she crosses the bridge. We get this bird's eye view of her crossing that bridge and we look down into this canyon. And what we see normally is it's pitch black. If, if the panel can't do its job properly, that canyon is pitch black, there's no detail. But as we look and as we play, we'll actually notice that it's pulling out a ton of detail in that canyon. It's pulling out the, the rock walls, the ledges, and kind of the crevices within that wall. It's fantastic 
that this monitor can even do that, especially in the HDR mode. So we're gonna fire up a bit of streaming content here with the PlayStation 5, and what I'm gonna do is actually play this in 1080p HDR, and then I'll do a little clip at the end that shows 4K HDR, and we'll compare the two and see if there's any difference. But I am gonna use that HDRi cinema setting. So getting in quickly and testing this 4K HDR versus 1080p because you know the PlayStation is capable of downscaling that to your 1080p video, I will say I don't know that I noticed any difference. Maybe it was slightly better in fidelity somehow. Uh, maybe the format of the video changes a little bit so it allows it to have a just a higher clarity. That wasn't really my experience here on the PlayStation 5. So I don't think it matters whether or not you're watching in 1080p or 4K. Nonetheless, it works. It works extremely well. Um, so it doesn't matter. You can keep it in 4K all the time or 1080p all the time. So I love the Xbox when it comes to streaming content. I feel like whether it's the Series S or Series X, it's actually a better media center than the PlayStation 5. I mean, we can argue on that. I think that's the case. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll give you one example why I think I'm right, even though it doesn't apply. Dolby Vision. Okay, moving on. So the Xbox always has a pain point here when it comes to using like a 1080p or 1440p monitor. And it's the fact that before you go in and watch anything that's 4K, you actually have to go back into the Xbox menus and allow 4K and then kind of readjust your settings to open it up. It's kind of a pain in the butt, uh, but you do have to do it nonetheless. So jumping into the first video here, we are watching The Force Awakens. Uh, it's basically the same intro, so we're gonna check out that star field. And in that HDRI setting, the cinema is doing a great job. I feel like the stars are actually a little bit brighter than they were on the PlayStation here, um, but overall it's doing a fantastic job with black level performance and overall contrast. The one thing I'll note is you see almost zero IPS glow. And then panning down to this planet, it's actually not blowing out the detail in the brighter spots of this planet, which is really hard to do uh, depending on the monitor you have because it has to light up everything equally. So the fact that it's not blowing out that planet or giving you a hazy gray black drop uh, is is actually something to note. It's noteworthy, you guys. Like this should be how your monitor performs and if it doesn't, then you got a problem. Okay, but getting into the nitty gritty here, we wanna see some action happening. We wanna see some darker scenes. And this one's always kinda hard to get with a monitor and it says intro scene with BB-8 and it's not extremely good. It's definitely crushing quite a bit of detail here. This is an area where I'd really have to pull that black level up and almost blow out the display a little bit, give that gray haziness to be able to make out all the detail. So that's not really a win. Um, it seems to struggle in this area, but most monitors do to be fully honest. So lastly, I want to play a little bit of a brighter video and contrast that HDRI performance in a video like The Eternals versus something like Star Wars. The Eternals is brighter, has a lot of color pop to it. It's fully like animated to a degree, like uh, all of the CGI they do in the video is vast. But you see here, as I cycle through those HDRI settings, that gold in Athena's dress really just pops, comes to life. The rest of the video has an amazing color to it. In the clouds, the clouds look real. They look gray, not this like blown out blue color. And it's not overly bright. It's the white areas aren't coming out as just blown out. It's doing a really good job in my opinion. But to wrap up on that HDR performance, you guys, I felt like compared to a lot of other monitors, especially 1080p, most 1080p monitors don't have great HDR, let alone many monitors that have HDR 400. And on this particular monitor, utilizing that HDR served us pretty well in game and in the cinema mode. But not everything was perfect about this monitor. And even though I think it's a great pairing for console, I'm gonna talk to you about the downsides, the upsides, and whether or not this should be one that you're looking at purchasing for your next gaming monitor. So the Mobius EX2510S definitely has some clear upsides, but let's talk about the downsides first. Starting with number one, 
I think probably the most apparent was the contrast. Depending on the game, it was very bright in those white areas and could kind of blow out the detail depending on what you're doing. Number two, if you are an Apex Legends player, like that lower FPS, that lower refresh rate is not going to serve you extremely well with this monitor, nor most other monitors for that matter. I actually think this performed good given the circumstances, but I have to mention it. And then finally, even though the HDR color was overall really good and the settings fantastic, the black level performance still struggled quite a bit in those darker videos. In game, it was just fine. To be clear, it was content both on the Xbox and PlayStation 5 that struggled in black level and shadow detail. Now. There are so many things that far outweigh those downsides in the upside category, but I'm only gonna talk about three, the three that I thought were the best. First is gonna be, even though Apex had a bit of a downside at that 60 hertz, when we switched over to the Series S, the motion handling was actually way better with the variable refresh rate technology, and I have to give it a win in that category. And to top that off, the overall input lag and motion handling through and through is actually extremely good, putting this into the category of a good esports gaming style monitor. And then to cap it all off, the features you get with this monitor, the menu calibration capability, the overall footprint that it takes up on the desk, the height adjustment, the pan, the rotation, the tilt, all of those things kind of come together to give you a fully featured 1080p HDR 165 hertz monitor that really, really becomes hard to beat. I mean, I can't list on one hand the monitors that have that level of specs and actually perform to the standard that it's supposed to. And I'll leave with this, you guys. Like, the reason I'm so like excited about this is my expectations were actually really low. Somebody on the channel recommended that I check out the Mobius lineup from BenQ. And when I saw this monitor at first, I was like, mm, it's probably gonna be okay. Can't be much better than like the Odyssey G3 or the XV271 from Acer. It might not be in the same category as that even. Like there's no way it can be better, but like, all of my expectations were shattered when I first fired this thing up. And I absolutely will tell you that you should be putting this on your one or number two slot, depending on what else you're looking at for console gaming. Like I would tell most people to get this over the 4K 120 Hertz because the performance level was so good and it pairs extremely well without spending all the extra. Like why spend seven or $800 when you can spend three or 400 on this guy and be perfectly happy. So that's where I'll leave it, you guys. If you've made it this far in the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. That's what keeps us going and making content. So we wanna keep doing that. Um, but what I'll say is I'm gonna put a playlist up here that playlist is gonna be all the console gaming monitors that I've reviewed. I'll test out the Xbox, PlayStation 5 on them, and there's a list and it's growing. And it's right above my little box that's talking here. So click on that playlist if you wanna check out all the other monitor reviews I've done for console. Otherwise, you guys, I appreciate you watching the video and I'll catch you on the next one.